Hey everybody, we're going to take a look at another couple of enthalpy problems. Um, both of them will have different looks to them, but it will give you more in your array of practice to help you uh, be able to really field anything that comes your way in terms of these enthalpy problems. So in this first one, um, we can see that they want us to calculate the enthalpy change for the reaction in which methane and oxygen combine to form ketene, which is a form of CH2CO in water. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with writing out an equation. Hopefully, I'll be able to balance it. Uh, CH4 is methane, and I'm going to omit the states of matter just for the moment. Um, plus oxygen yields ketene, CH2CO, and water. Okay, if I go ahead and I take a look at this and try to balance it, I have one C left. I have two Cs on the right. I'm going to go ahead and put a two in front there. Um, working on the H's, I have 8 on the left, here I have 2, here I have 2 as well. So if I throw a 3 coefficient out here, that gives me 6 plus 2 from that, and I am also balanced with H's. And then O2's, I have 2 here, I have 3 plus 1, that's 4, so I'm going to throw a 2 in front of my O2 there, and now I'm properly balanced. So my goal here is to take these two equations, and I'm going to combine them in some fashion. Uh, so that the both of them wind up giving me the model equation which I just came up with. I want the addition of these two equations to give me this original equation here that's balanced. Okay, so how do I do it? Where do I start? Well, I'm going to take a look at what I have here, and I'm going to determine if either one of these needs to be reversed, um, where the products and reactants will trade places. Um, and in the case of CH2CO, which is a product in my model equation, I'm noticing that it's a reactant in this first equation here. So I already know I'm going to have to flip this equation. So it's going to be 2CO2, and again, I'll just omit the states of matter for right now, plus H2O yields CH2CO plus 2O2. Okay, now if I flip the equation, that means I also have to flip delta H. So the value is now 981.1, but it's positive. Okay, my second equation, um, I'm looking at the model here, CH4 and 2O2, and I have that in uh, the proper placement in my second equation. So I'll just rewrite it down here, CH4 plus 2O2 yields... CO2 plus 2 H2O. Okay, so um, one thing I'm noticing is if I was to cancel an H2O here and one of the H2Os here, then it's only going to leave me with one. So I notice up here in my model equation I have three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to go ahead and I'm going to have to change some coefficients to help me out. Um, one thing I forgot to do, and I'll do it right now real quick, is to leave the delta H the same in this one here, 802.3. And um, if I double my equation, so I have four H2Os, that's going to help me because eventually I'll have to chisel it down to three. So right now, um, let's go ahead and see what we have going on in terms of being able to cross-cancel stuff. Um, I have CH4 down here. I don't have any more on the product side, so I can't do much with that. Um, here I have two CO2s, and here I have one CO2. And I don't see any CO2s up there. So let's go ahead and let's multiply this equation here by two. So that gives me two CH4s. It's going to give me four O2s, two CO2s, and four H2Os. Maybe this will help me eventually combine these two to equate to this original equation. Now, if I multiply this equation by two, it also means I have to multiply this delta H by two. So in this case here, um, I'm going to have to do some math in order to get this right. Okay, um, so 16, uh, eight. 02.3, if I double it, it's going to be 1604.6, and of course that's going to be negative, and that means I can get rid of this one here so it doesn't confuse me in the future. 
All right, back to our equation here. I have um, 2CH4, that's going to stay. I have 4O2. Now, in this case here, I'm going to get rid of 2 here and 2 from this one, which is going to leave me with 2O2s left over. And that's okay. Um, I'll look at some other stuff in my equation. I have 2CO2 and 2CO2. They're going away. And CH2CO, there's none on the other side. And 4H2O here. I do have an H2O right there. So I'm going to knock out that one, which means I'm going to have to knock out one from here too. And that's going to give me three H2Os left over. Now, I'm going to draw a big line underneath this. And what I see now, if I just add what's left over, is I have 2CH4 plus 2O2 yields CH2CO plus 3H2O. And if you look at this equation here, it is exactly like the one we have up top. And that's exactly what we try to do in these problems. Now, the last thing we got to do is we need to calculate. We need to calculate, in this case, 981.1, and I should put a unit on that, kilojoules per mole, plus negative 1,604 kilojoules per mole. Okay, go ahead and hit pause. I'll do the same. We'll come back and we'll see if our totals match. Okay, and my calculator screen is showing negative 623.5 kilojoules for delta H. So what does that mean? Well, this means that because it's a negative enthalpy, that we are going to be giving off heat when methane and oxygen combine to form ketene. So that means that these products are more stable ketene and water than methane and oxygen uh, when they combine together. And that is a trademark of um, a negative enthalpy and what it means. All right, we have one more to go. Let's take a look at our next problem. Okay, let's take a look at this second problem here. It says calculate the enthalpy of reaction for the combustion of methane gas to form CO2 and H2O. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a balanced equation. Uh, we just saw in our last problem that CH4 was methane. We're going to combust it, which means it requires oxygen. And what we're going to form from it is CO2 and H2O. CO2 and H2O are always formed when you burn a hydrocarbon, and methane is a hydrocarbon, being that it only has hydrogen and carbon in it. In fact, any um, alkane that has just carbon and hydrogen will always produce these two products. Okay, so what do we do here if all we have is this balanced chemical equation? And actually, we got to check and see if it's balanced first. So um, I assumed it, but I don't want to assume here. Let's see, 1C left, 1C right. 4 H's left, 2 H's right, so that means I'm going to have to throw a 2 out in front. Um, O2's, I have 2 here, I have 2 here, and I have 2 there. So on the right side, I have 4 oxygens. On the left side, I have 2, so I'm going to throw a 2 out in front. Now I'm balanced. Okay, where do we go from here? Well, from here, when you're given this type of minimal information, your job is to find a chart of enthalpies of formation. Now, I have mine. It's right here. And you probably have one in your book, okay? Usually in the appendix is the best place you can find a table for enthalpies of formation. And like Hess's Law states, what we're going to do is we're going to take the enthalpies of formation of the products, we're going to sum them up, and then we're going to subtract the enthalpies of, product, uh, enthalpies of formation of the reactants from that. Sounds complicated, but it's really not that bad. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to look up for example, carbon dioxide's enthalpy of formation, and it's negative 393.5 kilojoules. Okay, um, to that, since I it is a sum, I'm going to look up the formation of water, and water is going to be the gaseous form is negative 241.82. And there's going to be two of them. So what that means is that I'm going to have to go ahead and multiply this value by 2 before I get into my um, mathematics of um, subtracting the reactants from it. 
Okay, and that means we have to take a look at the reactants and determine what their enthalpies of formation are as well. And O2 is, uh, lucky for us, it's just zero. It's zero kilojoules. So that's easy enough to work with. And then our CH4, methane. Uh, methane's is negative 74.9 kilojoules. And again, I'm getting these values from um, a table that I'm looking at sitting right in front of me. So you can do the same with um, the tables that are in the back of your book. Okay, so uh, Hess's law said that we're going to subtract the reactants from the products. All right, so what we have to do is essentially bring what we have over here down underneath it. We're going to have a big old subtraction problem. So down here, I'm going to have negative 74 0.9 kilojoules. All right, I'll put a big uh, line underneath it there. And what you can do now is you can add negative 393.5 times 2 uh, multiplied by 241.82 and subtract 74.9 from it. Go ahead and pause the video. I will do the same and we'll meet up in a second and we'll see what we get. Okay, so um, I just finished my problem, and what I'm finding is that uh, my calculator screen is showing a value like this. It is negative 802.24 kilojoules. Okay, um, so what does that say? Well, again, we have a, an exothermic reaction that's giving off heat. And what that means is that when methane gas is combusted, the products are at a much lower energy level. The more negative the delta H value is, and in this case here it's negative 800, which is pretty negative, uh, that tells you that the products are extremely stable in comparison to the reactants. So I just wanted to run through another couple examples for you, um, one where you have to work with multiple equations and one where you're given very minimal information. I hope this helps you solve some of these tough ones that are coming your way. Um, keep your eye out for more videos. Keep studying. I'll see you next time.